Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, aka the guy who's thinking about Batman forever, and I don't mean the Val Kilmer movie, eh? You're having that! Now DC fandom is right around the corner, and with the movie due to drop on the 4th of March, we have a lot to talk about in terms of what's going to be happening in the film. There's also the trailer to go over, some brand new Lego sets, and potentially a sequel that's right around the corner. Some spoilers ahead, so if you've got a bat in your bonnet and want to remain in the dark, then I highly suggest that you Mr. Freeze the video and Christian Bale whilst you still can. Please give us a like and make sure you subscribe for breakdowns on DC Fandom all next week as you definitely don't want to miss them. Without the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into our Batman breakdown. Okay, so last week Lego sets for the film were released that showed some potential scenes that could be happening in the movie. The first one I want to bring focus to is Bruce chasing Selina on a motorbike and this is a clip that people were falling over themselves to film. Now from what I've heard, this will take place immediately after the penthouse scene from the trailer in which Selina breaks into the mayor's office in order to steal a ledger containing names and dates of all his criminal activities. The trailer opened with the Riddler murdering the mayor and this is because his corruption and greed greatly affected Edward growing up. In the film, we will learn that Selina and Falcone are related and that she will very much be about exposing her father. If you've read the book The Long Halloween, then you'll know that in that a similar scene happened with Selina stealing Falcone's ledger detailing all of his criminal operations. She managed to escape and Batman chased her across rooftops, but here it's looking like they're sticking to motorbikes. Interestingly, in that book Selina set off on a journey to find out who her father was and this led into her own spin-off series When in Rome. In that she tracked down a nun that was believed to be her mother and slowly the pieces fell into place for the reveal that she and the infamous crime boss were indeed related. So that all lines up and makes a ton of sense but take that plotline with a pinch of salt as we won't know if it's in the movie for definite until it releases. Interestingly on the Lego box they refer to Bruce as Batman but Catwoman as Selina. This makes me think that she won't really be the fully fledged anti-hero that we know and love and it'll be more of a transition for her that we see throughout the movie. I'm predicting that come the end of the film that she will pick up the moniker but that it won't really be mentioned until the closing scenes. Now it does seem that Bruce might even catch Selina as on the Lego box is an image of her giving up with him about to kick the crap out of her. It's okay if it's in a comic book kids. Now we can catch a chain lying beside her and judging by the other toy shots, it's possible that she might be using this instead of a whip to swing around the city. In the trailer, she descended into the mayor's office with a rope, but it could be possible that she has that to get around more in this metal depiction. Now next to that is a giant gem, and Catwoman of course started off as a jewel thief, however we also have the bat signal there showing that Bruce might already be working with the police on a more official level. In the trailer we watched as he was allowed access to the crime scene at the start and there's also a moment where he's in what looks to be a cell or interrogation room surrounded by officers. He is eventually chased out of this but the fact that he was allowed to go to both places in the first place shows that he's somewhat working alongside them and thus a bat signal already being set up makes a lot of sense. I've always been someone who's preferred it when Batman has somewhat of an uneasy alliance with the police and I love it when they turn on him as he's very much a vigilante in their eyes. Though he's useful when necessary, I very much think that there should always be some dissent amongst the police as he handles corruption which the force in Gotham is of course full of. Therefore they would have it in the back of their minds that they might have to bring him in too and it just makes a lot of sense to me to have this set up. Now according to Blu-ray Angel and big screen leaks, Batman will not kill at all, however he will come very close to doing it. The former is someone who apparently had a friend that attended a screening for the movie and the latter drops loads of updates and scoops on movie news. Big screen leaks kind of gives it away doesn't it yeah, you obviously leak stuff on it, from the big screen. And again we at the channel here are the world's greatest detective. Now they both said that Batman will walk that line and at one point almost kill one of the villains. The movie is meant to be taking large chunks of Batman Earth 1 and in that the Dark Knight almost kills the Penguin, however Alfred arrives and offs him instead with a shotgun. More like offswalled cobbled shot gun, hey, eh? having, having that one. Now I don't think that this will happen in the film and instead, oh, so bad, I think it will probably be the Riddler who is of course terrorising the city. Now speaking of Alfred, the Lego set also give us somewhat of our first look at what the character's appearance will be. In the new toys he appears to be wearing a waistcoat 
and he's also got long grey hair and a beard. This is somewhat keeping in line with the Earth 1 depiction and in that he was a retired army veteran who very much told Bruce how to fight properly. The character also had a fake leg and Bruce swiped it out from him during an argument because the guy has no chill. I would absolutely love to see a much harder and grizzled Alfred than what we've seen before and it would fit the tone of this film really well in my opinion. Andy Serkis is very much a proper cockney bloke and seeing this more modernised take would explain why Bruce is the way that he is in this movie as he wasn't raised by an upper class gentleman. In the Lego sets he is with Bruce at the quote unquote Batcave which as we know from the trailers will be a train station. It's a pretty low quality image but if we zoom into the archway we can see the words Wayne Terminus above the top and thus it belongs to his family. In Batman Begins we of course saw as they built the monorail to connect Gotham and it seems like in this universe that they did something similar with the underground. Due to their deaths it's likely abandoned but it gives Bruce the ability to travel to most points in the city without being detected. One of the things that adds so much to Batman's mystique is that he's seemingly a creature which moves in the shadows and can appear anywhere at once. This would add a lot to the Batman myth and legend and it actually pulls directly from the comics. In the Nightfall story arc, the Batman at the time had his Batmobile fitted with train track wheels and this allowed him to get around Gotham at lightning speed. Now, though Bruce wasn't wearing the cape and cowl at the time and it was Jean Paul Valley, aka Azrael, they could pull this across as it's such a cool way for the character to get around. Interestingly, Bruce ended up having to take the mantle off him because he was so aggressive and violent and potentially they took some of these character elements and put them into Pattinson's portrayal. Now, other things to notice about the Batcave or the fact that there seems to be a jail cell built into it. In the comics, the Riddler found out who Batman was but never told anyone because a riddle that people know the answer to isn't worth very much. However, with this more grounded take, he probably doesn't even care that much about riddles. You know, the, the owl one's quite a good one but other than that, pro guy probably doesn't care. And it could be that Batman just isn't taking any chances and he may end up keeping him in his own personalised jail cell instead of taking him to Arkham. Something similar was seen in Arkham Knight in which Batman had several cells in place to study those that had been infected by specialised Joker toxin. Now the cell itself has the Wayne W crest above it and we can also see the red light is wearing the Zodiac-esque mask that was first seen in the trailers. Interestingly his ginger hair is popping out the top in the Lego playset so potentially that gets torn open at some point in the movie. Even more interestingly they actually found out who the Zodiac is last week and it was Gary Francis Post. It's always a bloody Gary isn't it? Anyway, I wonder if they'll have more allusions to that killer as the mask and symbol of the Riddler are clearly similar for a reason. Now I wonder if the Riddler, much in the same vein as Catwoman, will turn to his more classic sort of look as the franchise goes on and it is possible that a sequel could be announced at some point over the next 6 months. According to super duper scooper Daniel RBK, the sequel is already being planned out and the movie will tease Mr Freeze at some point before setting him up for the next film. It's ice to see him to see him ice and he's a great villain that I think would work really well in the show. We know that a Gotham Central-esque spin-off is coming soon as well and in the comic book there was a brilliant Mr Freeze story that the police were heavily involved in. So they might be setting up for that but after the movie releases in March, I can imagine that we will hear of a follow up shortly after it. Now the next big look at the film will be shown this Saturday at DC Fandom. The mega event is going to have tons of new footage from Black Adam, The Flash and also some big special announcements. The first trailer was released when only 25% of the Batman had been shot so you can expect to see a lot more to be unveiled in this new look and I'm hoping that we get some Alfred as well as some bigger sets and locales. There was a point when Batman could be seen as he was about to glide over the city and I'd love to see a moment like this in the brand new look. We also now know that Penguin is going to be playing quite a big role in the future of the franchise as an HBO Max spin-off starring him has been announced. It would be absolutely incredible to see him pop up in future projects and much in the same way that Scarecrow became a mainstay of the Dark Knight trilogy, I'd love to see the Penguin appear in this kind of role. Either way, there's a ton of things to look forward to and I will of course be giving a reaction slash breakdown on the new trailer this Saturday before doing a proper deep dive throughout next week. In the meantime, let me know what you want to see in the comments below. We are running a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of the MCU Phase 3 box set on the 30th of October and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the video. 
We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now. So if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of What If Episode 9, which will be linked on screen right now. We went over the full thing from top to bottom and pointed out all the easter eggs we could find, so definitely go give it a watch right after this. If not, then thank you for sitting through the video, yeah, sorry for the crap puns, but I appreciate your patience. You take care of yourself, I'll see you on Saturday, peace.